Today's video, we're going to be having a look at the new Hot Toys Thor Ragnarok. This is the deluxe version, Gladiator Thor. This six scale figure release is product code MMS445. And not only are we gonna be having a look at the six scale figure release, but also its accessories and the exclusive items only featured in the deluxe version. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot of ground to cover here. Let's first start figuring out how tall Thor stands, and then from there we'll have a look at the figure and all his accessories. The figure is 12 and a quarter inches in height. For Thor's display base, we see a rather familiar shape, although adorned now in this graffiti from the planet Sakaar in which Thor ends up on. On the front, uh, rather interesting, he's got the gladiator Thor rather than just Thor and some additional scroll work kind of just etched into the top and bottom area of the metal plate. It looks extremely cool. I love the coloring here. Uh, very much got the vibes of that sort of 80s, late 80s, early 90s sort of uh, coloring that they've added here. Uh, on the side, you've got them Sakaar writing the scripture here. Now, what's interesting about the display base, and hopefully the camera is going to pick it up right, yeah, right there. You'll see as the light hits it, there's a little bit of texturing that's been added over top of the base. The texturing almost gives you the feel of a light sandpaper, but it is raised. And it's not in all the areas, actually. Like right here, for example, it's a little on the smoother side, smooth up here as well. But it gives you just a slight coarse texturing that just adds a little bit extra oomph to the display base. As for the display base itself, it just stands on a standard C-clip in which the figure is going to be standing on top of. Pretty nice looking base though all around. How about we have a look at these? I know normally we don't look at accessories just yet, but I want to get these out of the way. These are the exclusive items that are going to be coming with Deluxe Gladiator Thor, if you pick up Gladiator Thor for yourself. The standard release isn't going to have the following accessories, so I wanted to show these first and foremost, kind of keep them separate from the, you know, from the uh, the rest of the Thor's accessories. So first and foremost, you have a Sakarian rifle, which has some nice silver here, really more of the matte gray happening here, but then the outer areas, like along the top and the handle portion, is a nice almost brushed chrome. It has translucent red plastic on the side, also in the scope section there as well. I think that's the scope, or it could be some sort of targeting, uh, sort of targeting scope there. And it fits pretty decently in Thor's hands. I could probably show you that in a second. He also gets himself uh, a pair, and pair is probably not the best way to describe it because one is a little bit smaller than the other. Uh, now, these are Ein Harriar blades, uh, pronunciation pending. 
Uh, I tried to look online to see the actual way to pronounce these, and of course it will vary from person to person. Um, but they are spelt E-I-N-H-E-R-J-A-R. -E so again, whatever ways you want to pronounce that. I think it's pronounced ein Herr Jar or ein Herr Jar Swords. One is a little bit larger than the other. Uh, what you can see one is probably more of a, considered a broad sword, and then the smaller one is more of a, not quite a dagger, but a small bladed sword. Um, other than that, they seem to be almost identical to one another, one just being the larger of the two. Again, Ein, ein Heerjar, Ein Harjar swords. Um, I try my best, of course, to research this stuff. I just simply don't want to say kind of sword, or these are just swords. We don't want to do that. Uh, some nice deco here happening in the gold portion of the blades, the hilt portion of the blade. And you've got some nice deco there scrolled into the bottom area there. Kind of looks like uh, almost two snakes, not quite. This one completely closed shut. This one has a slight bit of a gap in between. So you have your Ein Herjar swords, broad, small. And then you have the Sakarian rifle as your exclusives in this deluxe release. I'm going to be looking at the rest of the Thor accessories in a second, but I want to first have a look at the figure itself. Now, this is once Thor has, of course, arrived on the planet Sakaar and is about to engage in gladiator combat. Um, so again, now gone is the longer hair. I didn't opt to get the longer haired Thor because it ultimately just had similar head sculpt to the uh, Thor Dark World Thor that I did end up picking up before, so I didn't really want to get too much into that. The body is roughly about the same. Uh, what is, however, contributed to this release is the additional Sakarian uh, scripture that's running down the leg. I'm not really certain what this stands for necessarily. It might have something to do with the gladiators themselves, and maybe there's a category class, not really sure, but that runs along pretty much starting at the top, and it's literally just painted over top of the body. You can even see that as it carries its way and has been just brushed on, or in the case of him on Sakaar, they probably would have just painted it on. It even went over top of his harness here, the little strap that runs across the front. But it runs its way and not very identical to one another. Each of the individual symbols seem different from one another. Ironically enough, though, the front loincloth as I lift that up, exposing Thor's nether regions, um, it is actually omitted. There's no paint on there whatsoever. It just carries its way along the side leather-like skirts down the sides of the pants and stops abruptly here also at the tied off lower areas of his boots. Gets a little bit of that also happening on this side, which becomes a little bit more clear and easier to make out. These symbols are very identical to one another. Uh, again, these symbols on the side seem like they are pretty unique. They don't seem to carry copied, photocopied uh, portions of them up. So it does seem like they are unique to one another here. This is an ongoing symbol, so it'd be curious to know what that symbol represents. It could be warrior, it could be gladiator, it could really just be, um, as well, just Sakaar and some sort of scripture that uh, Sakaar would be using on a regular basis. But there's his body. Uh, let's have a look at Thor's head. Now, I've done an unboxing of this figure before, and my initial thoughts were, I felt like the, the head sculpt was off. I think the longer I've had it, and it's been a couple of weeks now since I did the unboxing, kind of give me a good opportunity. I, I really want to get into the habit of opening up a figure, maybe even on camera, spending a whole lot of time with it before getting into knee deep into a review. It gives me a chance to kind of research stuff a little bit better and kind of give me that initial, I kind of want that initial feeling of getting a figure out of packaging. I want that kind of to diminish and I want to be able to kind of legitimately look at the figure head sculpt and really give you my honest opinion. Now, at the time I did the unboxing, I do feel and I felt then that the head sculpt seemed off. Now, since the subsequent weeks in which I did the unboxing and having now looked at this figure a second go around, I have to admit there's still something that's off on the face. I'm not certain what it is. I feel as if it could be maybe chalking it up to a longer chin that's throwing the proportions off for the rest of his face. If we look at just this, I think it looks pretty good and it does look like Thor. Perhaps the head, the forehead could be a little on the longer side too. 
but it, I'm wondering if a lot of that could be chalked up to the fact it seems as if his face has been slightly stretched. I wanted to go back and look at the source material again, and it doesn't look like he's got as long of a head in the movie, in all honesty, that I do find that's what's throwing this head sculpt off for me. That being said, though, the paint and everything else on the figure is done exceptionally well, especially liking the transitioning of the coloring on his, his stubbled beard. As you can see, it does carry its weight into his face, it gets a little bit progressively lighter, and it gets more to a flesh tone as it gets into the areas of his cheek. Of course, the notable trait on this Thor Ragnarok is that Thor's got the shaved head, and he's got the little etchings there, uh, somewhat reminiscent of a lightning bolt. I'm sure that's that was not intentional, and also carries over on this side as well. It's haphazard. There's no real professional look to the hairstylist. Of course, we know who was responsible for this hairstyle. But again, the hair works well. Something else is throwing this face off. I think a lot of it has to do with the chin. But again, something doesn't seem all that 100% perfect on this head sculpt. To the credit, though, of Hot Toys, I have to admit that the eyes are done exceptionally well. They've got just the level of recessedness that I would want for the eyes to be. They've also given a slight slick coat, or the eyeballs, of course, that they use have a slight sheen to them, that they do give a little bit of extra life to the figure. The face sculpt, hand-painted, is beautifully done. Very well painted. We've also got the, the lines, the two parallel lines running down the one side of Thor's face, stopping abruptly, of course, at the eyeball and continuing its way down. It runs from the top of the hair all the way down to the bottom of the neck. Going back now to the rest of his body. Now, this Thor is utilizing the rubber layered. So essentially what you do get is you've got the body suit, the frame of the suit, the frame of the, uh, the mold here underneath this. And they've essentially just put like a rubber almost a rubber skin over top of the frame of the, the six scale body. This is actually my first entry into this um, as when I picked up the Thor Dark World, um, I got the one that actually had the armor on it, the, the plates. So this is again my first time getting these. I have to say, and I guess technically I did pick up the Wonder Woman, that would also have that rubber body over top of it. It does things pretty good. I mean, of course, there's always that issue you got like this random hair right there. It is obviously a magnet to a lot of things. You'll find probably yourself cleaning off the body from time to time, at least the arms. Um, I've yet to have any issues, knock on wood, when it comes to Wonder Woman's body. But then again, I don't, I don't pose her in any sort of extreme poses. I like that they've put like veins and they've airbrushed it just enough that it does match that of the face. Having, um, say for example, some of the... I think it was the Star Ace releases too. I found the, the bodies were a little on the pale side because they were using also rubber. So I guess technically that this isn't my first time getting, but I guess to be fair, this is my first male uh, character that I've gotten with this, this rubber over top of it. Again, it's got some stability to it. It feels like it's a, it's a good quality material that they've used. It's probably a combination of not just rubber, but another material as well because rubber will degrade over time. Uh, like the veins though, again, I'm not going to probably get into too extreme of a pose. Bending the elbow seems to be pretty successful. Uh, certainly would not ever be a case where I would start considering to rotate this. I really don't think it's going to be all that successful anyways, but I think rotating it probably, you, you, you would l hate to have anything broken underneath all this because you would never be able to get access to it. Uh, it's to note though, having a look at the torso of Thor, this is still of a softer plastic, softer rubber. Um, it is actually over top of, if I can show you here, there is a, a body or a secondary uh, shirt underneath this. Um, there is one area, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, there's one area where it's become slightly frayed. May just go in there with uh, a pair of snips, just like uh, you know, scissors and just kind of trim that off a bit. You can see underneath it, it's almost like a faux leather material. I would not advise, nor do the instructions tell you that you should be removing this. They actually stay, tell you to stay clear of trying to take the torso piece off. I don't really see why you would want to anyways, um, but the instructions do indicate that. Then having a look again at the lower area of the leg, the, the sides of the legs are comprised of, well, two materials. Here, 
you almost get something similar to a velour or f I don't want to say felt, but it's got the feeling of, I guess, something closer to a suede, a faux suede, and then you've got a faux leather patch sewn to the front of the legs. Again, we've already saw, see the uh, deco that's been added here. He's got some knee pads. And then down the way to the boots, the boots here have been roped, roped off. The boot on this side, however, has the front uh, calf, front shin guard. Um, when you do, you can technically take this off, but the, the shin guard is attached not only by sculpt, but it's also been glued to place. So if you take the boot off, you're really gonna just be sliding this whole thing off, including this back portion here as well. So it doesn't really make too much sense wanting to take that off. There's the underside soles of his boots. He's got a little bit of dirt also on the tip caps, the top ends of his, uh, his shoes here. And you can see there's some stitching there added as well. Speaking of removing though, you can take the gauntlets off here, simply just a case of taking the hand. I always try to hold on to the ball joint because I don't want have to worry about taking that off and plugging that back in. But you can slide these right off and you can replace the hands. It's slightly a different construction as well, which may lend itself a little bit more to the sock, the ball joints not popping off. If you look at it, underneath there, it looks like there's a metal post. So you have the metal post here and then the rubber's over top of it. So that might actually do a better job of holding the ball joint in place. Again, we just kind of move the cape out of the way. Do the same thing on this hand. This is only if you want to go with this particular look. You can slide these off independently. You can slide off the elbow pad. And I just wanted to show you, let me just put Thor here for a second down. There we go. Uh, this does also have a hinge, but it's very small. Let me just show you how small it's, it's right there. I don't know if that's solely just fabric. I wouldn't be bending this back and forth too much if I were you. It's got a little bit of foam that's added on the interior just to kind of give us some support and it's not going to rub up against the skin here. Then we can go ahead and slide the shoulder pad off. Also works the same way. Get the figure to stand. Works the same way. This isn't as soft a material as you probably think it is. It seems actually more like a, a very dense, um, almost like a dense faux leather. It's glued only on the side, so again, you don't want to be moving this around too abruptly. Um, if anything, display him without it. Simply just put these away kind of in a storage bag or something like that. I would probably end up just keeping him, keeping it on him uh, completely anyways. One thing I do want to talk about, though, is his cape. His cape is frayed. That's done by uh, Hot Toys. They've done a really nice job of fraying the edges to it. It gets slightly dirtier down at the bottom, as it should, as it gets closer to the areas of the boots. Um, it's got a nice off-coloring here. You can see it more so when I flip the cape over. Up here, it gets a darker shade of red, kind of just accenting the trim, the edges of the cape itself. It's a nice material that they've used. It's very similar to the Man of Steel Superman. Um, uh, same sort of... Uh, it's almost like not quite nylon, but it does have, let me just show you, it does have a stretchy nature to it. So it's not just a, it does have a little bit of extra elasticity to it. I am really worried about this though. And I wanted to mention this to you because I don't know why it wasn't mentioned in other videos, but um, I'm really worried about this, this little loop of, it's again, a very thin faux leather material. That's the only thing that's keeping this attached to his belt. What they should have done is they should have taken like a metal ring, just a very small ring, banded it on the outside with the with this leather material and then still loop the cape through. So the cape was actually looped through the metal ring and then the outside of the ring would have been the leather material. So at least there was a little bit of, of stableness and secure nature to that, uh, to that metal. Uh, here, I feel any little bit of tugging, I don't know if it's simply just the way that the it was added to the belt anyways, but I don't like how kind of frayed and it seems a little on the shredded side down below. That's probably just the way I'm looking at it. But there's very little holding this in place. And once this breaks, you're gonna have just a cape that's loose and draping. You would have to find the means to reattach it. I would not dare say glue it back into place, 
but they really should have done something extra above and beyond just simply just doing this. That metal ring on the inside probably would have been a good idea that they should have gone with. Okay, so let's talk the rest of Thor's accessories. With this being the first thing I wanted to talk about is his gladiator helmet, a really reminiscent helmet of uh, the more classic Thor that would have had the wings on either side. I cannot stress this any more than I'm about to stress this hopefully in this video and hopefully the way I'm saying it conveys my concern for this helmet to you guys. For starters, it is made up of a very thin plastic. This is a thin plastic to start off with and it attaches via a magnet. I'll show you that in a, in a second. But the side fins are, I don't know if you can hear it. That's usually the test that I like to give you guys that tells you, hopefully, that that's a very thin, fragile, brittle sort of plastic that they're using. Any little bit of falling, any little bit of banging this, these will surely break off. And I really hope, uh, I've jinxed myself, I really hope that not be the case. The helmet is a really nice, dark, almost it's not quite black, it's slightly one shade higher than a black, almost like a very dark, dark, dark gray. And he's got the blue accents there on the sides of the fins, the wings here, or whatever you want to describe these as being. And it's got some nice silver in there as well. Now these hinge back and forth. You can bring these back, or you can bring them forward. There's a stopping point where they won't go any further past this point. And again, you want to just bring them back. I, just don't really like how sensitive this is. Now to detach this, this is the tricky part. You wanna, I find it helps just to kind of bring this forward, get your thumb in between, and very carefully pull the back off. The front lip here is of a thin plastic, so I'd be careful of that. This is the kind of thing where I really don't wanna do this too often. If I'm gonna decide that I'm gonna display him as Gladiator Thor, I'm gonna do it as that, and I'm gonna keep this permanently on him. I'm not gonna take this off too often. One of the big, big problems I have with this, above and beyond for the fact that they're using very thin plastic, is this little tab right here. You see how thin that tab is? Let me just show you against the backdrop of my finger, how thin that tab is. That's really the only thing, other than a few little ledges here, that keep this together. Uh, for the fact that there is, let me just show you here, that magnet right there, why couldn't they have put a secondary magnet here and somehow put a magnet on here instead of having to tab these in place every single time? Putting this in and pulling this out, that tab is guaranteed to break to, on you one day, and that's the last thing you definitely would want. They really should have put like a magnet up here, a magnet here, and then that would have been, at the very least, it would still be difficult to get your finger in there to pull this out, but at the very least, it wouldn't be relying so heavily on a very thin tab to do the exact same thing. To add his helmet, you're simply just gonna take his hair piece, best way as I can describe it, and it's on just a magnet. There's the magnet on the top there. Snaps very easy in place. The magnet is very strong, stays in place perfectly fine. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we're gonna take the helmet. The helmet slides through on the front, just like so. This is also something I probably is not, I'm not gonna do too often either, because putting this on and pulling this away, I'm wondering if that's gonna start wearing the paint that's on the front of Thor's forehead, just FYI. Then we can go ahead and add the secondary piece. There's that little lip I was talking about before. I'm gonna bring these forward just so that they're a little out of the way and I'm gonna line that slot up to the tab that was provided on the back and then that's just gonna close up, close up shop. And there you have Thor with the Gladiator helmet in place. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks good. This also, like I said, these can move forward if you wanna have Thor displayed like this. There's obviously very much the stopping point where those aren't gonna go any further. It does look good. Now, some have said that the head sculpt seems a little on the big side. I may agree with that, but I'm wondering if a lot of that is still due to the chin. If the chin was simply just a little bit shorter, I wonder if proportionately he would still not look as big. Of course, the helmet does add some extra mass to his head, does kind of make his head look a lot bigger than probably what it really is. But I think it's fairly accurate to the movie. I'm not gonna nitpick necessarily that this looks too big of a head sculpt. I think the head sculpt is fine. I'm more worried with the condition of plastic that they used for this. I don't wanna entertain the fact that they should have used metal 
This metal, of course, would increase the price of the item, but if you're not going to do, if you're going to use this sort of material, this can't be a material that's close to something that you're going to be wanting to detach and reattach uh, on a regular basis. And I probably will do this once, maybe twice. I'll luckily either display him with or without the helmet, and the rest of the time, I'm not going to be removing this on a regular basis. No way. I've also just taken the time to put the extra uh, arm guards back onto Thor because it fits perfectly for the time frame in which he would be wearing this helmet. Let's have a look at the rest of his accessories, shall we? He gets himself a rather large Sakarian shield. Um, it just attaches through, I'll show you in a second, you're going to pop the hand off. This slides in place. You can keep the gauntlet, the, the arm guard in place, you don't have to remove that. And this also swivels back and forth if you want to have it kind of sideways forward. The other way you can do that i don't know why looking at it when i saw it in the movie when i'm seeing it right now it reminds me of the shield that optimus prime had it's like kind of the same similar shape it's got a nice little dusting of dry brushed paint added to it just to kind of rough it up a little bit uh kind of sakarian art kind of deco happening on it uh, the coloring is almost not quite silver not quite gold something in between and it's got some nice little raised elevated uh, details to it as well Really nice looking shield. Now to put it into his hand, I'm gonna grab the hand and just full first and foremost, pull that out from the uh, the arm socket. Then we're gonna go ahead and add the shield. Now this slides in place. In theory, and I say in theory, what you should be able to do is take one of the gripping hands and grip it around this bar here. The problem is that this is so far over as you can see, it's already touching, almost touching, where that bar should be in place. Uh, what they almost really should have done, and I don't want to really sound like I'm nitpicking this figure, because I love the figure, but it does have little problems. Like this, for example, should have been a little further back to a lot for enough space in which you could get the hand around. Ultimately, what I am going to probably do is use either like the open hand where I can slide it underneath this bar here, and then just have him displayed like this. Or, to be honest, as much as I hate to admit it, probably just leave the hand off completely. At the very least, from this side, you're not going to see it. I could really just realistically bend the elbow. You're really not going to be able to see that there's no hand in place. Because working a hand around, basically you would have to get the hand around the bar, pry the fingers open, fit it around the bar, and then feed this through and you'd almost even have to have this further back, further back like this, to get the hand in place. It doesn't give you as much of a secure fit as if you have it all the way up to the elbow. A little bit too much uh, space been taken up here. It's not really enough space for a hand. He also gets himself a mace, which would be a perfect like, accompanying piece to the shield that we already had a look at. Mace looks good. It's of that same sort of dark, very dark gray, borderlining black. It's got a little bit of texture around the grip portion in which you would be able to uh, hold it. And he's got this glorious metallic cranberry red that makes up these little pillars, these little uh, slots around the outer area of the mace. They've scratched away a little bit of the paint just to give it that sense that the mace has been worn, uh, used frequently. And they've also worn it away on the edge there as well. Gladiator Thor also gets himself a pair of long blade swords. At first glance, they may appear to be identical, but if you actually look at them, the scripture, or at least the carving into the blade, is different from the one next to it. Even flipping it around, you can see that they do not share any sort of same similar print. But at the very least, they do seem to share the same etching on both sides. It's simply just a flipped version of the other one, or it does actually look like it's slightly a little bit different. The handles are also very drastically different from one another. This one is more of a coiled hilt, whereas this one here is more of a, kind of a little bit more of a smoother uh, sort of handle here. I love the airbrushing that they've done, transitioning from red to yellow or gold, and then to red again. Um, also, in addition to that, the coloring, as I best could describe this as, is a very 80s teal, teal blue that's been used here. The etching has been done in a darker gray, and then on top of that, they've also, looks like they've just dry brushed some a little bit of speckling across the blades as well. The figure also gets shorter variations of that, which are essentially, like, let me just show you the ones side by side. 
they are essentially the exact same thing, just a smaller version of this. And why do you get two small versions? Well, it does also come with uh, an actual uh, holster or sheath, if you will, in which the swords can be placed inside. Um, they are specifically going a, a one way. So as soon as you put it in, you start getting resistance. Know that you've put it the wrong way, flip it around, and it fits completely in place. Same idea with this side as well. They are very specific for the way that you have to put them into the sheath. This is also magnetized as well, so you don't have to worry about tabbing it into place or anything like that. At the very least, you may want to just move his cape out of the way and move the holster slightly up too, as it's magnetized and it fits very easily in place here. Magnets are always the best route to go if you personally ask this reviewer. Um, pegs are perfectly fine as well, but magnets at the very least allows you the convenience of being able to pull them off and put them on any time that you want. At the very least, I wish that the helmet could do the exact same thing. Of course, no Hot Toys would be complete without a series of interchangeable hands. I've got technically a, a couple of alternating hands here of various sorts. They're basically paired up by the type of hands that they are. So he has a pair of exaggerated or grabbing hands. You can make use of this maybe when you get the uh, Gladiator Hulk, for example. He's got some extended fingered hands. Uh, then he's also got a, a pair of relaxed hands, which I technically have on that socket currently, but he does have a pair of these, which are slightly relaxed. Also, he comes included with a pair of gripping hands. Yes, I only have one right now because the other one is right there. And defaulted, he's got a pair of close fists, which are... <sighs> yawn. I mean, there's nothing really overly exciting about closed fists, but they include them nonetheless. Let's run through Thor's articulation. Reluctantly, I've decided to do this with the helmet on. I really don't like doing too much with the helmet in place. The head does move up and down. It does rotate left and right. Um, the reasoning why I did keep the helmet on is one thing I want to stress caution to you guys. These do move up and down. We've already established that, but if these are far enough down, as you probably would end up displaying him. Be mindful that when you are moving him across here, he doesn't get caught here. I've already had that happen a couple of times where it was low enough, it got stuck on there. And as you can see, as you're, as you're moving it, the fin here starts bending inward. That's not something that you want to be doing. So you might want to even just move these up if you want, and then just move the head in place to where you want it, and then bring them back down. Technically, the figure would also have an upper torso crunch. There's not really much you can do with it. Keeping in mind as well, he's got uh, the rubber torso. Then he's got the fabric over top of that. Then he's got this, the armor plating uh, over top of that. It does really limit what you can ultimately do with the torso. Um, you can rotate it, but really, who are we kidding? Uh, the arms hinge outward to about there. You can also move them forward and back. Again, I'm a little on the iffy side when it comes to long-term bending these. If you're gonna bend like the arm, for example, I don't know if I would retain that pose for a long period of time. I don't wanna give you a time frame, but say, for example, if you're gonna have Thor's arm bent for a couple of days, maybe just kind of go back and just readjust it because you don't wanna start developing a crease line running through the rubber there. The arms rotate out, the hands, I should say, rotate all the way around. Seems that they frequently do pop off there. I don't know. The peg is the regular length that it normally is. I'm wondering if it just simply is because the the arm guard here sits so low as it does that it probably just kind of butts against it when you are rotating the hand. For his legs, his legs hinge out, as well as forward and back. He has a top swivel cut on the very top cut of his thigh, double hinge on the knee. Luckily, the material that they used for the legs make it so very easy to bend his legs. I have no problems whatsoever there. Uh, and then it also has a, a foot articulation, so his feet angle back and forth, up and down, and technically you can rotate, rotate them all the way around. Not really sure why you'd want to, but you can do that nonetheless. Gladiator Thor, for whatever critiques I made about the figure in a negative way, is actually a gorgeous looking figure. I will admit though, that the head sculpt seems slightly off. I'm even looking at like the box artwork here in which it shows Thor Although it is a illustration, it is an illustration of the of the character. You will admit, though, you will probably see that his chin doesn't seem as long as what we got here with the six scale figure release of him. So I do think that the head sculpt seems slightly off. 
It's a gorgeous head sculpt though, but it does seem like it could be a little on the long side. It's very well painted. Of course, this is my first entryway into a male uh, rubber suited figure and I hope the longevity of this guy he's gonna last the test of time I'm probably not gonna bend him and get too crazy with his poses at the very least I'll probably just have him standing straight upright and maybe bending his elbows that at the very least is all I'm gonna probably do with him I know I over the course of this video it probably sounded like I was really finding a lot of fault with this figure and keep in mind that I have to understand as well that this is a six, six scale figure release, assumingly so, depending on where you're living. Once you factor in exchange rate, shipping, and maybe brokerage fees, this figure may cost you closer to $300. So I know with that comes the sense that you almost have to hold, you have to handle the figures with a little bit of sensitivity. You can't ham handle these figures, which I know in a lot of cases, sometimes you may ultimately do when you get them out of packaging. And I've done that, I'm guilty of that myself when I've done unboxing videos of taking figures out of the packaging but you do have to give a little bit of of a weird conscious uh, handling that a lot of these pieces are going to be a little on the fragile side so things such as the helmet things such as that little loop that hold the cape in place are really my biggest problems with this figure if you aren't moving him around a lot and you have him on a display base and you have him say in a glass cabinet the, the problem with the helmet may not be that big of a concern. Equally said, about the same with the, uh, the little loop that holds the cape in place. You're not going to take a statue, put it on your bike, and ride it to the store. Of course not. You're going to be a little bit more careful with a higher-end piece. The same thing can be said here for the Hot Toy releases. Um, as a whole, I do really like this figure. Forever, whatever shortcomings this figure may have, and it's really only those two points, maybe the head sculpt, but the biggest problems I have are with the helmet and the cape. Those again are very avoidable if you have them just very well cared for and displayed in a display cabinet. It doesn't still justify the very brittle plastic that they used for the helmet, but if you're not gonna be removing it all that much, you shouldn't really have any problems. But I do think, I do still stand behind my opinion that they should have used magnets to attach the two halves of the helmet together. Using a very thin peg, I'm not going to be changing this very often at all. In fact, I may have just decided over the course of this review, I'm going to keep him probably with the helmet on. It looks good on him. Kind of wish he had a little bit more of a smirk or a smile on his face, kind of depicting the scene in which he first meets the Hulk. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this figure, and I am happy that I picked it up. I know when I did the unboxing, I said I might have had buyer's remorse because ultimately there's going to be an Avengers Thor, but keeping the helmet on this one is really what's going to make him very distinct versus the Avengers Thor and for, of course, the fact he's got an eye as well. Either way, though, whatever feelings you may have about this figure, he is currently available over at Sideshow Collectibles if you want to pick him up for yourself. Uh, like I said, the price point on him is going to be a little bit more expensive. The deluxe version is also going to be a little bit of an added cost. And I just want to mention quickly about the exclusive parts that came with him. The two swords and the rifle are nice touches, but I don't think I'd ever display them with the figure, so I think this is a case where you could pass on the deluxe figure and you're not really missing out on anything. If the regular version had a non-helmeted head sculpt, and let's say the deluxe version came with the helmet, I would justify picking up the deluxe version. But now, looking at the rifle and looking at the swords that he comes included with, I'm never really going to display him with those, so I think you could really pass on the deluxe version altogether and just get the standard release. Today, though, we were having a look at the Hot Toys. This was Thor Ragnarok, the Gladiator Thor deluxe version, which was product code MMS445. There you go. Bob's your uncle. If you haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so, guys. We're going to have some more Hot Toy figure reviews coming onto this channel. I say we, but it's just me. I'm the only guy doing this. I'm the guy that's running the store. Um, also, if you want to go back and have a look at some of my Hot Toys figure reviews, which I happen to think are pretty good, you can check out my playlist that just says Hot Toys Reviews. Um, also, head over to my main channel, uh, take you back to the main page and go to the section that says videos. See if there's anything you may have missed along the way because there's a good chance the amount of volume that I'm always uploading, you may have missed out on a video. And that's your best place to find anything you may have missed along the way. Like I said, guys, more videos will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.